Good evening, Dr. Jones. Welcome to this podcast of RRS 2019. Give us a little more information about the History Committee's choice of symposium. Yes, good evening. Thank you very much. Um, History Committee's uh, contribution to the RRS meeting in San Diego in 2019. We felt that it was timely to um, have a session uh, that looked back at the historical perspective of complex DNA damage. Um, it was also one reason we thought about it for San Diego was that, uh, of course, John Ward, who is in fact one of the speakers, is, is based in San Diego. Um, a lot of people uh, know about complex DNA damage. They, they you know, they've studied. It's been a, a topic of intense study and debate for, well, several decades now. And so we thought it was opportune uh, at, in San Diego to take time, take time out to reflect upon the field of complex DNA damage, and really have the opportunity for delegates, notably. Uh, young researchers and early career you know, SITs and the ECIs to hear firsthand from you know, people who really led that field uh, how complex, how the ideas surrounding complex DNA damage evolved and how it was established and how it's been studied. And really, good afternoon, Dr. Wallace. Welcome to this RRS podcast um, for History Symposium. And I see that you have a very interesting uh, title of your talk, um, to repair or not to repair. Seems like an eternal question. Uh, <laughs> would you like to tell us more about that? Sure. So um, when the chemists uh, originally defined clustered lesions, mostly with high LET radiation, but lower LET radiation has them as well, that meant that you could have in very close proximity on, to, on the DNA molecule because you had all of these free radicals being produced very close to the DNA. You could have a combination of strand breaks and uh, sites of base loss and a lot of base damage. The enzyme that recognizes the base damage will incise the base damage and then cleave the DNA molecules. So what do you get? A double strand break. Not so good. So yeah, you're making yeah. it worse, actually. You're making it worse. So that's why the question is to repair or not to repair. And a bunch of experiments with single lesion, you know, closely spaced single lesions and different enzymes. Close, you couldn't do too much, but once you got them reasonably spaced, you you would end up with a double strand break. And so we went on. So that one night I was called this, you know, my, <laughs> my morning shower idea. Oh. So, hmm, if that's true, if you that overexpress the enzymes, the start enzymes, like the DNA glycosylases that recognize the base lesions, if you overexpress them, you should be increasing radiosensitivity. Or if you downregulate them or have mutants, then they should be more radio resistant. And so molecularly, I, I think there's a, quite a bit to answer in, in terms of understanding what happens in chromatin. So there's, uh, there's a lot that people could take away and start their own little projects and work on. That's very exciting because we need to learn the background from you. At the same time, if there are more questions that you have identified, then a lot of us would be benefited by picking up those questions and start working on those aspects as well. Mm -hmm. So this is such an exciting um, symposium, and I'm sure we all are going to be benefited from the wealth of knowledge that you, you all have and that you are uh, ready to share with us. Well, good. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Thank you so much for this uh, podcast. Oh, thank you very much. Good evening, Dr. O'Neill. Uh, welcome to this podcast. I want <laughs> you to actually transfer the excitement you have had uh, over the years to some of us who are getting yeah, yeah. on to the radiation research yeah. um, afresh. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, there, is, there is so much excitement that I can see from your work. 
that we would like to tap. So our, my so, interest uh, was, if you have the cluster damages, can they, are they more mutagenic because they're very difficult to repair and as a consequence, mm -hmm. can they be mutagenic or mm -hmm. they can give, also give dirty, really dirty double strand brakes. Oh. So can what can one keep them dirty mm -hmm. in, try and, in order to make sure you kill the, the the cells when they're in tumours. Oh, right. right. <laughs> uh, join, join the symposium <laughs> on uh, the symposium. Com complex damage, DNA damage. My my role was is essentially to discuss very much that do they actually enhance mutagen mutagenesis in okay. cells? Because yes. obviously most of the original concepts were came out of threat models. Mm -hmm. you, so could could they, could one actually show in real real life real time that actually they do actually cause uh, mute, more mutations that dirty that double strand breaks which are dirty they they're also clusters do they are they much more difficult to repair and if so why and what's the path which pathway is it okay. research you know pathways are interfering with it so mm -hmm. it's to get a feel for for that and how that may then impact um radiation low dose radiation this is the, exciting it's very interesting how you can divide these things up and of course depending on whether you're on low dose or high uh -huh. dose depends on which ones are probably doing most of the reporting to cause the bi biological and health effects i'm going to finish the talk uh -huh. on on some avenues which could be explored from what we've shown and oh. could be taken forward and very much the real-time evolution of breaks would be something great <laughs> you know would be great if people take that forward but most of the people who work in in DNA repair who are not involved in radiation uh -huh. obviously they don't have the luxury of producing clusters and it was always a question, myself and John Ward, the other guy who's, uh -huh. who's one of the speakers, we well, always used to ask, how do people really know that the, <laughs> that the breaks they're looking at, are, at, uh, at, at, you know, after, you know, one hour after uh, the irradiation, how do they know they were there mm -hmm. initially and they're not latent breaks which were formed mm -hmm. through uh, processing, etc.? Yes. Wow. So there's a lot of lot of interest in the area, and I think Absolutely. a lot of people now are realizing that radiation can form damage, which is essentially unique to radiation, right. and can have a open up a whole new Pandora's box about what's Absolutely. happening. So I'm really excited, and hopefully some of the you know one it'll the people who are already in the field. Mm -hmm. will be interested but hopefully it'll, there'll be quite a few younger people there who might feel that this is an area they may not oh, have yes. had much exposure to and they can hear more about it and maybe it might you know stimulate them to look into these areas themselves Absolutely. and i do i guess what we'd like to see from this is 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 you know a solid historical perspective um showing how you know the, the, the field has evolved Mm -hmm. and really has sort of been one of the main sort of thrusts of it, it's one of those topics that goes right across all most of the disciplines that we study physics chemistry and biology in particular and cellular response to radiation damage because we have to remember that radiation is unique in its uh, ability to introduce complex dna you know, complex dna damage into cells and and it's and really it is how the cell copes with that damage that takes the outcome of, of or the cellular fate i think both um well enlightening and educational but i think incredibly beneficial to some of our younger investigators the, the sit community and the eci community the early career investigators so this is indeed a, a complete session uh, by itself. 
despite uh, decades long research, there is so much more that can be explored and many more new scientists and new researchers can take away small parts of the project for themselves as well. So I do hope that a, um, a lot of the audience actually come over and listen to the talks. And as you said, it's a privilege to hear it from the pioneers. And Absolutely. That does, not, that does not happen that often. So I do hope that a lot more people come in to listen to uh, this session and attend and get benefited from it. I thank you for agreeing to uh, do this interview with me. And um, you have a very good evening. Okay. Catch up with you in San Diego. Bye now.